Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionaris, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Mnemonics. I hope you watched the previous videos in this playlist, especially the ones on digoxin, as well as Paget disease of the bone, because they were epic. As for today, we'll talk about anaphylaxis mnemonic. What does ana mean? Ana means up, as in anatomy. Ana means up, and tomi means to cut, so anatomy literally means to cut you up. That's the ana, up. How about phylaxis? It means protection. Oh, so it's an allergic reaction where the body is trying to protect me from the allergen. Bingo. Can someone tell me in the comment section how is anaphylaxis different from tachyphylaxis? Let's get started. Please check out all the videos that I have in this mnemonics playlist. They are way more than seven. Anaphylactic shock. It's part of shock. What does that mean? Shock is defined as generalized inadequate tissue perfusion. That's it. If the tissue is not perfused, odds are your blood pressure is low. That's why your tissues are not perfused. No blood is coming to the organ means the tissue is not oxygenated, which means say goodbye to your TCA cycle and electron transport chain, impaired cellular respiration, impaired cellular metabolism. This alone will lead to tissue damage, organ failure, and death. It can also lead to the shift to the anaerobic glycolysis, and that's why many patients with shock have lactic acidosis. Here's the entire book of internal medicine in one slide. If the heart is not perfused, you can get angina, you can get myocardial infarction. If the brain is not perfused, the angina of the brain is called transient ischemic attack. The myocardial infarction of the brain is called ischemic stroke. Hypoperfusion to the kidney will give me pre-renal azotemia, which is part of renal failure or pre-renal failure. Hypoperfusion to the lung will give me red infarction, not pale, because the lung has a dual blood supply, bronchial and pulmonary vessels. Hypoperfusion to the small intestine equals mesenteric ischemia. To the large intestine, ischemic colitis or colonic ischemia. Hypoperfusion to my fingertips, Renaud's phenomena. Hypoperfusion to the liver, ischemic hepatitis. To the gallbladder, a calculus cholecystitis. And hypoperfusion to the pituitary gland after delivery is Sheehan postpartum necrosis. How about hypoperfusion all over the body? This is shock. We divide shock into, well, my patient is cold and clammy or my patient is warm and anxious. Cold and clammy is probably hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock, or obstructive shock. Patient is warm and anxious is usually distributive shock, where everything is fast, everything is dilated, everything is distended. And distributive shocks could be septic, anaphylactic, or neurogenic. Today we're talking about anaphylactic, which is distributive, which means my patient is warm and anxious. Next, anaphylactic shock is one of the causes of high output cardiac failure. Just like with Paget disease, which we have discussed before. Why is that? Because you have vasodilation. Everything is moving real fast. So I call it everything is fast. Everything is dilated. Everything is distended. The heart is pumping blood faster. So my cardiac output is high. So you can call it high output cardiac failure or hyperdynamic circulation. Everything is fast, everything is dilated, everything is distended. My patient is warm and anxious. This mnemonic is all about the A letter and sometimes the I. What is anaphylaxis? Anaphylaxis is a severe allergic reaction. What kind of allergen? Any substance, any allergen can trigger an anaphylactic shock. These are just common ones, including peanut allergy, eggs allergy, shellfish, allergy to iodine, to food additives, allergy to antibiotics, especially penicillin, allergy to blood products like plasma, cryoprecipitate, allergy to whole blood, etc., latex allergy, allergy to bee stings, wasps, etc. What's going on? Most of the time it's IgE, but it does not have to be IgE, by the way. IgE triggers the mast cell or the basophil. When it's in the blood, it's called basophil. When it's in the tissue, it's called mast cell. And before you know it, phew, degranulation, releasing histamine to the blood. What does histo mean? It's like histology. Tissue. It's an amine in the tissue, released by the tissue mast cell. Histamine does what? It causes vasodilation but bronchoconstriction. The vasodilation will decrease my blood pressure, causing circulatory collapse, the high output cardiac failure. The vasodilation will give me urticaria, itching, flushing, etc., 
and the bronchoconstriction will give me wheezing and shorts of breath and sometimes cough and angioedema. Next, these diagnostic tests are not performed routinely because this is an emergency, so we do not have time for this. But if you do them, you'll find elevated histamine and elevated tryptase. Next, how can we manage this patient? Remember the ABCs for emergency. Airway, breathing, circulation. Remember, it's ABC for the itchy wheezy SOB, which stands for shorts of breath because I'm a good guy, I do not curse. Maintain the airway, give oxygen if needed, and then the circulation. Start the intravenous axis and give normal saline, which is 0.9% sodium chloride solution. It's an isotonic fluid, which means it has the same tonicity or osmolality as your plasma, which is about 290 milliosmoles per liter. Per liter is osmolarity, but per kilogram is osmolality. Clinically, we don't care. It doesn't matter that much because the density of water is about one. So one liter of water will weigh one kilogram. The distinction is not huge in medicine. Next, the most important thing in management of anaphylaxis is adrenaline or epinephrine. How much? 0.3 to 0.5 milligrams. How do I give it? What's the route of administration? Intramuscular injection. And what's the concentration or dilution? 1 to 1,000. If you know how to dilute concentrated adrenaline, there is no need for an EpiPen. Problem is, most people cannot do it, hence the EpiPen. Of course, if you want to dilute it, you better do it in advance. Do not wait until the anaphylaxis is happening and start diluting your epinephrine. Better to be ready beforehand. Next, antihistamines can help. These are anti H1 or histamine receptor 1 antagonists. They block the effect of histamine on the histamine receptor number 1. Please let me know in the comments section if H1 is GS coupled, GQ coupled, or GI coupled, and why does it matter in light of the symptoms that you see. Next, corticosteroids. Unfortunately, most students think that we give corticosteroids for the acute attack. No, we give it right now to prevent recurrence of anaphylaxis or to prevent the prolongation of this anaphylactic attack. It's not for the acute management. For the acute management, you gave adrenaline already. So that's the most important thing. And some pearls for the pros. If the patient is on beta blocker, meaning a drug that blocks beta receptors in the heart, when you give freaking epinephrine to work, you're trying to stimulate the beta-1 receptor in the heart, right? But it's blocked. So your epinephrine will not be very effective in raising the blood pressure and reversing the shock. So what should I do then? Give the antidote to the beta blocker. What's the antidote to the beta blocker? Glucagon. Why is glucagon the antidote to beta blocker? Please refer to my videos on insulin versus glucagon. You'll find that video in my endocrinology playlist. We talked about anaphylactic shock today. If you want to learn about the other types of shock, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. It will even teach you about many arrhythmias, myocardial infarction, and strokes. If you want to learn about trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, ophthalmological surgery, urological surgery, and much more, download my surgery high yields. For preeclampsia, eclampsia, gestational hypertension, gestational diabetes, and much more, including acute fatty liver of pregnancy, download my OBGYN high yields at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Each one of these courses comes with videos, notes, and cases. Plus my favorite part, which is Medicosis Couch Potato, made of several short style questions and answers that you're supposed to listen to while laying on the couch. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses and notes. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.